Hello class, welcome to our introduction to biology unit. Today, we will be going over cell structure, organelle function, and getting an early understanding on new biology. Here, we have an animal cell. The cell is the building block to all life on Earth. Even you contain over 50,000 cells. To power these tiny machines, each cell contains eight special organelle parts. The flummox, Kexlix rod, Dindlitz, Juppel's pocket, the Epkis sacs, photogrammatic crumple, Zyto complex, and the Golbus miranda. The organelles within the cell float in a cerebral goo called ovum that's suspended by an elastic membrane called the cell screen. Let's start with the bilateral flummox module, a perforated purple sac of organic compounds. The flummox is split into two symmetrical portions. We call them flumcuous sinister and flumcuous dexter, left and right. The flumcuous sinister undulates strands of sebus that flow through tiny cavities in its undercarriage. Sebus are a knotted up protein-like stimuli that transport information. The sebus are untied and sent through tubule blepgella. Those tubes act as the veins throughout the cell. And once through the blepgella, Flumcuous dexter, the right side of the bilateral flummox, uses the untied sebus protein to create Epkis serum, using a process we call the Leplush injection. By combining two parts hydrogen with every four parts Leplush hydroxyodiopin from the sebus protein, we're left with a sugary, gum-like syrup called Epkis serum, which is pumped through the blepgelin into the two Epkis sacs. Next, we have the Golbus Mirandi. This lumpy organelle is a series of filters within the cell. The Golbus removes glucose sugars and fatty uvum from the Epkis serum to inject a photom gel into the walls of the cell screen. This process creates a mucus that bonds the structure together, creating a torus shape or donut-like hole called the Kexlix rod. This Kexlix rod forms a hollow spine that runs the length of the cell. It acts as a mouth and anus. Dendlets, also known as baby fingers, are small tendrils that can pass through the thin Kexlix membrane. The dendlets scrape at the exterior leopal fluid, draining it into the flumcuous sinister. The Kexlix is supported by a thin Teflon membrane called the Juppel's Pocket, named after Philip Juppel in 1896. The Juppel's Pocket collects stray waste within the cell. The Juppel secretes a fluid called Ogis that acts as a sticky digestive layer that can dissolve leftover proteins to create a necessary nutrient called raw uvum. Raw uvum is a fatty jelly that can act as a metabolic lubricant for the zytocomp's digestion. The zytocomplex digests the serum from the second Epkis sac to create copious amounts of sebus, liblets, and iopine. Once fully matured, it begins to hoard away all nutrients inside itself. The zytocomplex will engorge until it becomes a thick layer of fat along the cell wall. Lastly, a thin orange band made of glucose sugars called the photogrammatic crumple hugs the base of the flummox husk. This tiny ribbon holds nearly 34 miles of DNA, and once the cell becomes over-encumbered by the zytocomplex, the photogrammatic crumple will eject itself through the Kexlix rod where the zytocomp will undergo the process of siphoning 30% of the pod's resources into the enlomatic crumple until it can self-sustain. Through the process of mibrosis, one cell becomes two. Now, this is a video lesson, so if I went over any part too quickly, feel free to go back and take notes over anything you might have missed. Let's take this a step further and zoom out a little. Here we have a cross-section of human skin. This is a good example of what your cells are capable of. Obviously, we have the epidermis, the top layer of the skin. This is what you see when you look at your arm or hand. It's full of tiny pores that sprout hair, but underneath, there's a lot to learn. First, we have the lobus mollis and the lobus difficilis. These two protect and insulate the lower layers from damage. The lobus mollis is made of thin running fibers like the grain of a tree, which is why they call it the fibrous granum. These hair-like flagellum are used to filter toxins before they reach your immune system. But the lobus difficilis is quite a bit different. Its spongy design helps prevent heat transfer by using a porous Schwamm shield that binds itself to the fibrous granum through the process of gibbum suture. The gibbum acts as a binding agent. If you've ever gotten a cut or scraped your knee on the sidewalk, the gibbum suture is what allows the epidermis to heal. 
The thick orange layer under the lobus is called the non-Ferredian gluster, a dilatant paste full of large holes called the hemetum sockets. The hemetum hold very important sweet glands inside numerous holes to produce sensory perspiration in the form of sweet. If we go a little further down, we have the curd bar, a gummy, dew-like layer that's responsible for rooting your hair and nerve blendings to the Gershwin wall. When you get a tattoo or a piercing, the ink or jewelry will travel all the way to the curd bar. Wow! Finally, we're at the Gershwin wall. In 1932, ephemologist Dr. Rhonda Gershwin discovered the final layer that separates your skin from your muscle. She was awarded the Golden Lobus by the National Board of Scientific Excellence for her outstanding discovery in ephemology. What Dr. Rhonda Gershwan was unaware of at the time is that the Gershwan layer is completely useless and removable. 40 years later, in 1972, her daughter Kathy Gershwan found a thin layer she coined the new Gershwan under the previous that has plenty of functions and features. Now, that is a lot to take in, but let's take it one step further. Let's zoom way out. Here, we have the anatomy of a human person. This, you might be a bit more familiar with. Up at the top, we have the exophageal campus. Your exophageal consists of five separate tubing devices, one to swallow, one to inhale, two to exhale, and one for throwing up or expelling gas. All these tubes interconnect with your riblet sordium, a cartilage fleticle seam of teeth rings inside your Juppel's box, named after Philip Juppel in 1896. The termentum is a spiral lipless organ to relay aerobic contraction to your lip rubinoid, a divergent suborgan distantly related to the thoracic bell. And an easy trick to remember that for the test is, every time the thoracic bell rings, your glendex kingdom gets a king. <clears throat> Excuse me while I take a quick sip of water, gotta hydrate that exophageal campus. Okay, so the glindex is a quad qualame of teethy fetal clump centers that fight for dominance in their hierarchy. The highest glindex is known as your king, which serves to digest neural spikes in your bloodstream. Next is your queen. The glindal organ chauffeurs the corral away from the barn to ensure a reactive metabolism. The glindal full and the glindex twin have yet to mature until your 16th birthday. Now, let's move to the upper left quadrant, where we find the vium ponix. This magnetic hose sifts out pieces of grit and grime out and away from your tomentum. The vium ponix is made of a thin rhetorical acid where it gets its name, the metaphorgan. The metaphorgan creates a fluid ounce of thickened condensed mucal jelly every hour, offering safe harbor for your food as it travels to the Boplin Bissouri. The Boplin partially gesticulates oncoming traffic like a crossing guard stopping and allowing fermented molecules from the fibrous slick of the Garmatix and Fieldman. Two vertical assemblages. The Garmatix and Fieldman regulate bosticular bodies across the pulmonic artery fields. Most commonly, these two are known for splice reduction and great picnicizing, similar to that of the Hummeltrox. The Hummeltrox, Philarkin's Exotropopal V-Supple, Sarpomichael P, Jackarillum and Maclebates Blue, Legum Tess, Level Type, and Bagworm, Esotraquaki Guinness Book of World Records, Keep Lila Ur, Clop Turbo, Vindicom Yabermax Light, Seep Seep Gleep Clop, Parla Unidom, Pencil, Blagageer. And alright, that completes Module 2 of our introductory course to biology. Please complete the test in the description below, and we will continue to Biology 2.6 Module 3 next week. I hope everyone has a fantastic day.